nation's favourite antiques experts. That's me. I like that. Behind the wheel of a classic car. Hold on. <laughs> and a goal to scar Britain for antiques. <laughs> on guard. The aim to make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no mean feat. I can't believe it. There'll be worthy winners <laughs> yes. and valiant losers. Okay, I was robbed. Will it be the high road to glory? Right, come on, let's go. Or the slow road to disaster? Oh, road. Ah! Oh, road. This is the Antiques Road Trip. Nice. Wow. Oh, look at that beautiful view. Oh, look all those surreys. Just, I know. Look at that. I'm looking. I'm looking. It's a glorious morning in Somerset, and antiques dealer Irita Marriott and new best pal and coin expert Tim Medhurst <laughs> are in that fine 70s Reliance scimitar, a stone's throw from Glastonbury. Are you a festival goer? The last time I went, I got weed on. <laughs> so I never went again. <laughs> He's so rock and roll. What have you done? Ripped my shirt. <laughs> My, my biceps are so large, my shirt is ripped. <laughs> <laughs> ah, get him, the Incredible Hulk. Having set out with £200, he swelled that to £375.92. And the Hulk was still green when Irita maintained her lead with another win and a new total of £415, 2p. You've been quite a cheapskate. You've, you've bought thing for a fiver that made a good profit. You bought something for a pound that made an amazing profit. So I need to I buy something you... for 20p. Now. Yes, <laughs> yes. See, can you go even lower? How Tim, low how can low go? can you go? I can only imagine. Ooh. They sallied forth from Newick on Trent, travelling all points of the compass before heading north for a final reckoning at Stamford. Today, though, they're sampling the pleasures of the West Country. Have you ever had Somerset Brie? Do you, like, have a cheese board in the evening? Is that your thing? I do like a cheese board with a few different cheeses, biscuits yeah. and frozen grapes. Why would you want a frozen grape? It just adds a bit of, I don't know, it's just <laughs> nice and refreshing. <laughs> Tim, it just adds a bit it of... It adds a bit of, you know, <laughs> flavour. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> I must try that. On this trip, our new buddies will be watching in Avington as their purchases go to auction. But after being dropped off by a Rita, up to Noble is the first destination today for Tim. This tiny village is a rustic delight and Ralph's yard looks very promising. Rebecca, hello. Hi there. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. Not bad at all. I'm loving the look of this place. Thank you. I don't know where to start. Probably over here. Right behind you, apparently. Oh, look at that. Now, that's a pleasure to handle one of these. I absolutely love them, and they've become such an iconic decorator's piece. This is a footstool made for and retailed by Liberty of London. They made lots of different animals. You've got lions, rhinos and pigs, all sorts. I think the pig is one of my favourites. Look at him. Oink, oink. Oink, oink yourself. Now, he does have some wear and tear, but being, I would imagine, from around the 1940s, it would gain some wear and tear. But I wonder how much he is. Rebecca. Yes. How much is your piggy? 150. Can we do a deal at 145? Go on then, 145. One, Lovely. As long I'll as you name that. him. As long as I'll you name him. him before I leave and I'll pop him there. How about Pinky or Perky? Thank you very much. OK. Meanwhile, let's catch up with Arita. She's making her way a few miles to the southwest and the very pretty market town of Castle Carey, where, tucked away up a wee lane, is Botanica, apparently stocking vintage, retro... Hello. ..and bizarre. <laughs> Looks promising. Now, my style's a bit flamboyant, shall I say. I like things that are big and bold and... And that's very me. I quite like the look of that. Do you? Have a look. Persuade me. That looks as if... Let me try it. Get to... I mean, let's start with the fact that I can see damage, and damage is never a good thing. Seeing that from a distance... Sorry, Teddy, I'm going to move you for a minute. It looks as if it would be hand-painted on leather and it's just been near some heat and that has made it quite badly crack, hence there are little pieces that are 
literally fallen out. 28 quid. Hmm. I'm just going to buy that. My first buy of the day. Let me get in there. Oh my goodness. Oh, it is heavier than I thought. Right. Ah. Ooh, I better not, not knock anybody out. Whoa! Careful. <laughs> that was chair in my way. Right, let's manoeuvre. Hello! Owner Steve is out back. Steve! Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Whoa! Oh, I need to watch my hands. Oh. <laughs> oh, he will be broken by the time I get to you. It's not quite what I expected to find, no. but, um, you know, actually I saw it in a bit of a darker room. Kind of looked better in there. It's priced at £28. And guess what? It is your lucky day. I ain't haggling. Gosh. I didn't want you I'm to... I'm too old to haggle. <laughs> <laughs> Just putting my money there to £28. Thank you very much. And indeed. wish me good luck. Oh. Yes, and I hope you win. <laughs> so do I. Go. See you later. Take care. Bye. Right. Oh. In the boot with it. It's like made to measure. Perfect. Off we go. Laters. We need to get back to Upton Noble to see how Tim's getting on. Another room. <laughs> it's like a treasure trove. Loving it. He's scarring those barns, but will he spot anything? God, I like all these. These are great. C.E. Wilcox, chemist, starch. Look, they're all old apothecary bottles. Apothecary? With their old labels as well. And what I really like about apothecary bottles... Apothecary? ..is you can imagine those sort of Victorian or early 20th century chemists and their front windows would have just been covered in these wonderful apothecary bottles. I give up. We've got about ten here with labels and I'm quite keen on those. So if we can do a deal on a job lot, I quite like the sound of that. And still, there was more. Oops. I'm glad I didn't wear my white trousers. So am I. There's just so much stuff. Whoa. I like that. Now, look at that. It's a um, 19th century Victorian brass-bound oak barrel. And we've got brass binding here and an oak body. And I love the wear and tear on it. I think it's got a really good look. And you know what I love best about this place is there's no prices on anything. So, you know, the slate is clean. We can do a bit of a deal. I like it. I'm just going to see how much it is. Ooh, I'm pleased with that. Let's see what Rebecca can do for him. Rebecca. Hi, Tim. All right, I'm back for my rummage. Ah, oh, good. Now, I've dug out this bucket. Right. What's the price on that, do you think? 40, you can 40. take that off my hands okay. at 40. Um, right, those chemist bottles in the shed. Right. Um, and I think there's 10 that I quite like. Right. So what are the prices on those? Um, the pharmacy bottles, 15 each. Okay, can we do a deal? 30 pounds on the bucket and 100 on the bottles? Do you think that's a deal, 130? Yeah, that sounds good. Is that all right? Yeah, so I think 130. I can do that. Thank you, right, so 145 on the pig, 130. 275. Okay. There we are. There's your money. I'll pop it there for you. Thank you. I'll Tim. let you get on with what you're doing. Thank, Thank you. you very, very much. I'm Thank you. Myself. Take care. Pleasure. Don't forget Pinky. This looks nice. Oh, meanwhile, back in Castle Kerry, Harita's gone for a cup of tea and made a. made a find. I have just passed this amazing Italian Florentine mirror on a wall. It dates probably from early 19th century. Might as well. I, I mean, come on, I have nothing to lose at all. So I'm going to ask and see can I buy it? Because it is amazing. She's very daring, or cheeky, or both. Hello. Hello. Thank you very much. Have a uh, before you go, can I just ask a quick question? I've saw this gold mirror on the wall. Yeah. I know this is very random, but do you think there's any chance of me buying that mirror? Quite possibly. Really? Quite possibly, yeah. Um, well, well, that's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any idea how much would you be willing to sell it for? Hundreds. 
I will have that for 100, please. And here's your money. Let me pop that down there so it does not blow away. And I really appreciate it because I absolutely love it. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Cheers. Tim's making his way west across Somerset now, heading for the small village of Ashcott. There's nothing more British than the pub, and as well as enjoying the beer, some people take an old pub game very seriously. Skittles. John Holdsworth is one of those people. Where's this game most popular, then? It's worldwide, uh -huh. but specifically in Britain, in the southwest. So from the county of Worcestershire right down to Cornwall, you're never far from a skittle alley. How old were you when you first chucked your first ball down the aisle? I think I was around 15. Oh, OK, so you've been doing it for... A long time. You've been, you're quite experienced, though. <laughs> I am, yes. I used to play with my uncles back in the day. Right, John, well, you've wet my appetite. Is there any way you can show me how to play the game? Well, Tim, you have come to the right place and you are with the right person. Brilliant. You so Let's well. go. Sounds good to me. Can't wait to chuck that ball down the aisle. By Tudor times, skittles or nine pins was played across Europe. Gentlemen and women created outdoor and indoor alleys, and the game was even more popular among common folk, but was often banned on account of associated gambling, drinking and lack of regard for the Sabbath. These days, West Country Skittles is all good family fun. So, Tim, this is our alley where we've been playing since 1959. As you can imagine, on a Friday or a Thursday night as a Skittle team, this place would be buzzing with all the team players. As you can see, it's a solid wood flooring. And here, down the bottom here, is the nine pin diamond. The object of the game is to knock all nine pins down. And the maximum score you can get with three balls is 27 pins. As you will see, there is one bigger pin in the middle. That's what we call the landlord pin. These are traditionally made of oak because they take a bit more of a beating with the balls that are used. But these pins differ on alleys throughout the country. We've got three balls, as you can see here. Cool. It's a bit of a heavy weight. Oh, now, that looks to me like lignum vitae. That's correct. The Victorians used loads of this. It's pretty heavy, isn't it? They have to be strong for when you're throwing them down the alley to take the brunt of the pins. European settlers took the game with them to America, and Charles Dickens, visiting in 1842, noted that bowling, now with ten pins, was all the rage. This folk game spawned 2,000 alleys in the US by 1929, where boys were employed as pin setters before automation in the 1950s. It's still the older nine-pin version here. <laughs> I got two and they still need to reset by hand. Thanks, Steve. And there are variations from county to county, as Sergio can explain. In Wiltshire, we play where you have to hit the front pin first to score any pins. Ah. So um, if you were to throw a ball and it didn't hit the front pin, any pins that were knocked over would stay down and not count towards your score. So I got nothing? Um, basically, yes, you got nothing. Oh, thank goodness we're not in Wiltshire, right? Eh? We also play another form called nomination, where every single ball you throw, you have to nominate which pin you're going for. But we tend to use that just in cup competition. That's for the pros, that one. That's for the pros. Right, OK, chaps. Friendly competition? How about a game? OK, come on. It's Wiltshire versus Dorset and Somerset. Ooh, look at that. Come on, Tim. Don't miss me. Oh. John, what a great time. I've really enjoyed this. I can see why it's so addictive, even if the Dorset side flopped a bit. Sorry about that. It's been great teaching you today. Like I said, it's been going for centuries and we're trying to preserve it for centuries more. Bye-bye. What fun. A few miles away, Arita is back behind the wheel, an en route to charming Somerton an important centre of the ancient kingdom of Wessex. Arita's after old treasure, but hopefully she'll be restricting her shopping this time to an actual shop. Market Cross Antiques and Interiors. But she already spotted something. Pete is ready to serve. Good afternoon. 
afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> How are you today? Good, thank you. Uh, I know I've just walked in, but I've spotted something through the window. See, th this is how quick of a shopper I am. Ooh. I really like him. Yeah, he's good. That's bronze. How adorable. Got a good weight to it. Is it bronze? It yes. Feel. Yeah, it's cold. Got a good definition. And he's got glass eyes. Let's have a look. What have you got on him? Eighty-five pounds. Bargain. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good response. Now, throw me a figure before I walk away and start looking around elsewhere. 60. It's a good start, I would say. Right, let's pop you down there. You better behave yourself, I might be back for you. There's a dog bowl there, so you'll be all right. <laughs> well, we know how much the doggy in the window is. <laughs> Ooh, hopefully it can only be uphill from here. <laughs> magic name of Royal Worcester. Worcester is one of the best porcelain makers in England and these are all hand gilded and jewelled. And when I say jewelled, they have tiny little enamel dots on them. And there's five of these. Oh my goodness, they are absolutely beautiful. <sighs> and I said to that too early. That one's got a broken handle. That one's got a big crack in it. That plate's cracked. All of it is a bit second grade, really. <sighs> Let's pop that back. There's no price on it. And we will ask to see, could we find out how much these actually are. Back to Pete at the front desk. Look out. Now then, little man. Been thinking about you. What do you reckon? Shall I take you home with me? Well, not quite home, but you know. Now then, I like this doggy. I also like the Royal Worcester cups and saucers. Now, let me just pop this down because it's a bit heavy to hold. Um, the cups and saucers didn't actually have a price on them. What is the price? The cups and saucers can be fifteen pounds. What about the dog? Fifty. It is cups and saucers and a doggy, please. See? Pain free. Brilliant. Let me get you some money. So, I owe you 65, is that right? I'll pop it under the duck and hopefully they won't think I'm barking mad buying this. I will. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Not barking mad, but definitely five cups short of a tea set. <laughs> Time to collect the erstwhile skittler and head home. Should we go somewhere and have something to eat? Oh, I'll tell you what we should have. Go on. That cheese ball. Well, your weird frozen grapes. <laughs> well, I'll trust you with this one. And let's go and have some frozen grapes. <laughs> bon appétit, mes petits choux à la crème. And our new companions are lucky to be spending their second day enjoying all that Somerset has to offer. I hope you haven't been on the scrumpy. That's quite a big thing round here, you know. I don't drink at all, you know. You, you're teetotal, I, aren't you? I yeah, think I have never have had a drink in my life. That's incredible. That's why your skin is so good. <laughs> <laughs> Slap you one in a minute. Mm, careful. I have to say, you're laughing. It's a cackle, isn't it? It just makes me laugh. It's brilliant. Wait a minute. Does that mean that when you laugh, you're actually laughing at my laugh? Does that mean I'm not actually funny? I'm laughing with you and at you. It's all oh. right. Well, OK. Oh, Tim. Shelling out for a Liberty footstool. Oink, oink. A planter and ten apothecary, <laughs> apothecary bottles. And I'm quite keen on those. Left him with two hundred pounds and ninety-two pence, while Arita found gold in a pub. Imagine what would be the chances! I literally went to the loo and came back with a mirror. <laughs> Not a toilet roll. <laughs> <laughs> At least I didn't come back with a toilet. Quite. And as well as that mirror, Arita also scooped up some Royal Worcester china, a bronze dog, oh. and a leather panel. See you later. 
so her new budget today is £222.02p. And mirror, mirror on the wall, who will make the biggest profit of them all? Ooh, now that's a question and a half. I have no idea how this story ends, but we'll begin by banishing our princess while Prince None Too Charming <laughs> drives his coach to the town of Krukern. He's headed for the Antiques Bazaar, housed in a massive old mill and piled high with the wares of 95 traders. Anthony is in charge. You'll be some time getting round this place. Okay. Oh, my dear. Wow, look at these. Um, anybody that knows me knows that I love early furniture. And the reason these ones have caught my eye are because of these lovely painted armorials. Now, back in, say, when these were made, around, I would say, 1820, 1840, the owner of them would have commissioned a set with their armorial painted on the back. They would have been made originally to line the great hallway so the idea was they were somewhere just to sit briefly, but not stay for long. They're probably still quite uncomfortable because of their original use. Yeah, they're pretty uncomfortable. You wouldn't want to sit here for long. But, uh, uh, yeah, they are a bit rickety as well. If we have a look at the bottom, yeah, look at this. But I like this. Somebody's loved this chair enough that they've put these metal brackets on just so it can be used and used. And a furniture restorer wouldn't have much trouble bringing this back to its former glory. £65 for a pair. <sighs> Depends if we can do a deal, though. Let's go and see if we can find a price. Oh, goody! Anthony? Yes. Hello. Hello there. How are you doing? Yeah, fine, Tim. And you? Good. Yeah, not bad at all. I've set my heart on, potentially, down to price, a pair of hall chairs. Right. Um, they're up at 65 Do you think we could get down to... I don't want to be cheeky, but you look like a lovely guy. £50? 50 quid. Um, 25 each. Yeah, OK. I would have thought that would yeah? be all right. Is that yes, all right? Yeah, yes, you, you, you're a you're gen. Being, you're being very fair. Thank yeah, you that's very fair. much. Right, let me pop your money down here. Right. I'll go and grab the chairs. Thanks Five for the tenors. deal. Five lovely. All Take right. Care. I'll Thank grab you. the chairs. Good luck at the auction. Bye. Can he get those in the boot? <laughs> oh, we're in. Good work. Cheerio. Meanwhile, Arita's making her way to West Coca, where, at the height of the empire, British Navy sailing ships were rigged out with the finest sailcloth and twine grown and made here. To find out what made Coca canvas and twine so special, Arita is meeting Ross Aitken at the Restored Doors Twine Works. Hi, Ross. Shall I head through the gate? Please do. Flax was grown here in the 17th century, right up to the First World War, when production peaked. The geological features of the local rock, the Yeovil Sands, creates the perfect damp soil conditions for growing hemp and flax. And so that's why the whole of this industry grew up in this area, because your raw material was better than anybody else's. And the sheer amount of sailcloth and twine required to rig out a sailing ship is quite staggering. The top sail of the Victory, Victory had 36 sails. The top sail, which was the smallest, has one and a half miles of twine in it to sew it together. Now, wow. if you think then about how many ships there were in the Navy and then how many ships there were merchant ships, you get an idea of why, how important twine and sailcloth was in here alone. So there were 40 types of twine made here. You wouldn't think that you need 40 types of twine. <laughs> Didn't and know that many existed. No, exactly. <laughs> Coca canvas was made from yarn which was bucked, that is shrunk, before weaving, a process which produced expensive but hard wearing cloth. So a Coca canvas sail would last um, twice as long, perhaps up to two years, whereas other people's sales would last much shorter than that. And by 1815, coca canvas became the standard for the Royal Navy. There were once 
five twine works in West Coca before the gradual decline of the industry. Doors closed in 1968 and the site lay dormant for decades with its original machinery intact. Thanks to a great restoration effort, it's ship shape again and Chris Barker can turn flax into twine. Is this what it's made out of? Well, that's the basic raw material and that grew all over this area. And if you look closely, you'll see that the outside is fairly woody, but inside there are very fine fibers and that's what is spun to make the yarn. And then we take the yarn and make it into twine and other people took the yarn and made it into rope and sailcloth. Upstairs, behind, that, behind these 10,000 tiles, you have machines which twist the yarn okay. to make the twine. And then downstairs, we have these drums which circulate the twine so you can apply the preservative. Now, the preservative is the bit you didn't want to be working on when you were here because it's boiled up animal guts and rabbit pelts and goodness knows what else. And this area here, would be very wet and very smelly and very unpleasant. Life in the past, eh? Time to start processing Victorian style. So it's literally twisting three bits of yep. twine oh, into one rope yep. ply. It's a very simple process, simpler than making rope. And as you can see, even those few seconds running, yeah. we've got the twist already. To prevent rotting, the next stage is the sizing. And this is where the, the twine was treated. Once it's dry, then you get your bucket of horrible smelly stuff and a sponge and apply it. And then that's allowed to dry. And finally, to give it the real finish and the polish and make it all smooth so you can sew with it, it was polished with a horsehair rope. And after probably two or three hours, I reckon, you could turn it all off and then you have your completed twine ready to be wound onto spools and sold. Doors once operated 12 balling machines, but today they have a last one restored for Erita to finish off some twine. Oh, that looks very familiar to Does what? It? I, yeah, as a child we had something very similar at home. Right, so. To, that's it, clockwise, that way down. Keep going. That's it. That's it, and you can see the ball forming. Oh, yeah. As we say goodbye to a perfectly preserved piece of the Southwest's history, Tim is waving farewell to Somerset as he crosses into his home county of Dorset to Sherburne, a marvellous market town. Let's find some booty. Tim's bound for Ackerman Street Antiques and Interiors, where he's arriving before Erita for first pick of the goodies. There's two floors here and no shortage of possibilities. Now, you can't be in the West Country, in Dorset, the home of the Jurassic Coast, without seeing a fossil. Look at that fossil. This is a bit of wood, a fossilised bit of tree. And I suppose you could say that it's an antique antique. It's the most antique you could get. A fossil. Wow. Ancient, but £250, sadly, is out of my budget this time. Jurassic. I love that word. Ah, here's a Rita. I feel like I need to run. Tim's already here. Too much energy, this pair. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did I say too much energy? Hello, Lord of the Manor. Hello there, I've just... Um, Having yeah. some frozen grapes, are you? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> I found the frozen grapes for our cheese board. I hope you don't choke on one of those, cos they're quite big ones. <laughs> Be careful, Timothy. Be careful. OK, you get on with it, and then maybe in a bit I'll get on with it. <laughs> See ya. Bye. Glad she's not stopping to peel him a grape. Oh, I love him. Look at him. I found a little pig. As a vesta case. He is adorable. And it says Little Vadhurst Farm on the side of it. This looks good. 
this does not look like a reproduction. And the main thing is you can see where it has that wear from being just handled over the years. Cause, and you can see it on the little legs and the arms and his little face. So you would have had your matches in there and you got your striker on the bottom and you got a little hook on here that you would have probably put it on a chain the, your watch chain or, or key chain to carry it with you. It's £46. Not sure why I'm whispering. Who cares? It's much more dramatic. So I'm going to ask what is the best price for this little chap and he will be coming to auction with me. Time to talk to dealer Claire. Claire? Yeah? I would like to take this little piggy to auction. He's very cute. It is priced at £46, and do you by any chance know what might be the best on that? I do. So her very bottom line would be 35 Well, I ain't arguing with that. OK. Very happy bunny at that. And let me give you some money. Perfect, thank you. And off to auction we go. Good luck. Thank you. Bye. Bye. That's her sorted, and surely Tim stopped lounging about by now. Now, when you pick this up, you might think automatically... It's bronze, but then, of course, you feel the weight. Now, in the 19th century and early 20th century, it became very fashionable to have a, a library, a plaster library bust. And that's kind of what this is. I think it's slightly later than the 19th century, maybe even, say, up to the 1930s, just because of the quality of it and the look as well. The 19th century plaster busts are generally very, very good quality. This one might be a little bit clumpy but in a way that's quite good for me because if it was 1880s we might be looking at two to three hundred pounds which would be out of my budget now I don't have that much money left he has 50 pounds 92 pence exactly it's got damage here you can see the chipping on the hair and there's a little hairline on his cheek but what would you expect for something that's potentially about 100 years old maybe slightly less than that now I think we ought to go and see how much it is. There's no price on things. I love it when things don't have a price. Hopefully it's within my budget. And um, on this one, I hope I don't go bust. Boom, boom. Claire is the woman to ask. Hello, Claire. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Good. Right, well, I've had a great look around, as yep. always. And this time I've found a nice bust. Excellent. Um, now, I don't know whether it's lucky for me or not, but there's no price on it. What do you reckon? Um, I know who that belongs to. I oh, know good. she was going to put about 50 on it. OK. Um, I know she said you probably go to 40. 40, OK. Um, is there movement there in is. that? There um, is. What do you reckon? Might go to 38, but yeah, 38. she probably okay. won't Well, every pound that. counts, doesn't it? It and does, it does. Now you've said 38, I think that's a really fair deal. Yeah, so perfect. I'm going to go with that. Thank Could you very much. That. Thank you. I like him. Yeah, I like him too. Right, let me pop the money down here, count it out. 35 couple of pounds. There we are, 38. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Enjoy. See you again. Bye. Woohoo! That's them, both done. Off they go in high spirits with high hopes. Here we go. Beep, beep. I've been really enjoying being on the road with you. It's I'm just glad been... to hear that. So it... have I. It's been good bands. That's what they say, isn't it? Good bands? Is that like what the cool kids say? People down with the kids say that. Down with the kids? Well, we don't even know how to say that properly, so <laughs> I don't think we fit that criteria. <laughs> <laughs> Nighty night. Now that is the beauty of 16th century workmanship, that house, isn't it? Look at that. It's just beautiful. Tim and Rita have made their way to Abington Park near Winchester, a grand house with a history of hosting illicit royal liaisons. Our pair are innocently parking up to watch on their tablets as the gavel comes down on their purchases. Oh, get the volleys up. Let me get this before I get drenched. Oh. I'm ready. <laughs> I was born ready. Cuttlestones in Penkridge is where their antiques are being auctioned. There are lots of plenty, and bids will be coming in online by phone and on the book. Arita parted with £228 on five lots. What does auctioneer Brian Cantrell think is a winner? Sell for £90. The mirror's very interesting, lovely ornate mirror. So expecting a really good price for that. Lovely piece. 
Tim splashed out £263 on his five lots. Brian? The leather pig uh, footstool made for liberties. Very unusual, very tactile. I think that's going to go very, very well. It is pretty impressive. Amazing parkland as well. Isn't I know. It? Some horses over there. And you know what? Let's not horse around. <laughs> Let's watch this auction because I literally cannot wait. OK, come on. I'm, I'm... I'm very excited. Fingers crossed for you. And they're off. First, Arita's bronze bulldog. Set. Are you right, Timothy? Yeah, um, yeah, a good old bronze for £50. Doesn't seem too much money to me. Oh, I like it when you're worried. Started me at £110. <laughs> Oh, 50, this is a flight. 50? 170. 180, 190. <laughs> I think you've Still got two people that own bull mastiffs, don't you? Looking for 200. 200, 210. Whoa! 220. What? 230 with I can't believe 230 it! 230 with them! Selling to the internet for 240. Who's a very good boy, then? You're £10 oh. off, £200 on that. I am over the moon. Can Tim's plaster bust follow that? I like it, but I wouldn't have bought it Ooh. myself. Well, wow. straight in at £55. How much? £55! <gasps> 60. And 5. 70. And it 5. It ain't that bust, is it? <gasps> 8. <gasps> and 5. Right, that's enough now. <laughs> keep right. going, keep going. And a sell for £90. Heading in the right direction. Yes! Wowza! Oh, over £50 profit. Now, time for Erita's Gilded Mirror, which once adorned a pub wall. I'm a bit worried. £100 is not a lot of money for that quality. Oh, definitely not. My starting bid is £65. 65. 70. Oh, it's Any slow going, isn't it? Up to 90 now. 95. 95? Go on. 110. Come on, I need a bit more to break. 110, 120, 130, 140. You're Any well into profit, one? that's good. Come on. 150. 150. Anyone? Self 150. A fair reflection of its value, I think. You found it in a pub, and it shows you can make money anywhere if you keep an eye out. Yeah, you can, you really can. Under the hammer now, Tim's armorial hall chairs. It's the best type of recycling. People buy utility furniture and throw it away. But that is very furniture true. Furniture can last forever. Yeah, Straight very true. It's 60 pounds. Straight You're into profit. profit. 60 pounds. 65. 70. Oh, it's climbing now. 80. 85. Slowly but steady, Timothy. 90 pounds. 95. Oh, come on. Just in the nick of time. For 100. Go on, round it up. Sell it. 95. Almost double. Excellent. I'm pleased I bought those because I'm... they were nice, weren't they? I'm quite pleased, but pleased for different reasons because I thought they were going to sell for a lot more than that. Next up is the first porker, Arita's Vesta case. I would really like it to go to a good home, to a collector. Well, it's definitely going to market, so should we see how it's doing? No, he didn't go to market. He went to auction. <laughs> start on the net at £12. £12? 15. That's not a strong start, 18. is it? 20. Looking for 22. 22 I've got. It's slow going, <laughs> isn't it? I'm going to sell for 22. 25, just in time. £25. Oh! Selling for 25. Wee, 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 all the way home. Well, my pig got stuck in mud. It <laughs> Time for Tim's brass band bucket now. Now I'm hoping there's not a hole in my bucket here and all my money's going to fall out the bottom. I hope there is. <laughs> yeah. I'm 20, 22. I paid 30, we've got a way to go. 28. Come on. 30, 32. Oh, you five, jummy. 35, 38, 40. Oh. Just in time! He really is holding out, isn't he? He likes this bucket, doesn't he? He likes it. I'm going to sell it for £40. That seems fair. £40. A tenner's a tenner. I'm happy with that as a profit. Tenner is a tenner. Yeah. It deserved more. And will Arita's Royal Worcester Cups and Saucers get what they deserve? How much did you pay for your teacups? £15. £15 for five. Where's the I six? No money. Did you drop it? 18 Terrible. 22. They're going Keep on. Going. 25. Keep going, please, please, please. 25 pounds and sell for 25 pounds. 28. Oh. That, uh, that is what one of these cups would be worth. If there was and six. And it's five. <laughs> Selling for 30 pounds. Well, that is double. 
I'm gutted because if I would have been at auction and I would have seen these, I would have paid 100 plus pounds for them. Right, I'll get mine out of the boot. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for Tim's collection of medicine jars. I think these might be my most risky purchase. Not long to find out. Starting bid of 50 pounds. 55, 60 with me. Oh, well, he's going. 65. <laughs> 65. 65. 75. 75. Oh, he's climbing 80. 90. 95. Ooh. 100. You've done it! I've got 100. 110. Come on, Sally. a little on. more. 110. Perhaps not the best medicine. Good job on a tenner. Thank you. Better that than nothing. <laughs> now, it's the turn of Arita's painted leather panel in the ornate frame. What do you think of my leather panel? It's quite OTT, isn't it? Yeah. If I'm you've a got a very OTT, flamboyant I? interior, it would suit her, wouldn't it? My house, perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Internet kicking off straight in at 80, 85. Yes! What? Good 95 jeans, baby! It's at 95 pounds. I'm aghast. <sighs> Sell at 95 pounds. 100. 100! It broke 10. the 100! One... <laughs> Go home. 110 pounds. <laughs> oh. Selling for 110. Blimey, that was impressive. Ooh, 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 110 ooh, pounds for that. Think of what lovely things you could buy for £110. Yeah, like my panel. Tim's trailing. Last chance to catch up now with the Liberty Piggy footstool. I have absolutely no doubt that this is going to fly. I hope so. No doubt whatsoever. Pigs might fly. Straight out by the internet at £200. Straight in at £200. 230 250 260 Doing good. Come on, smile, Tim. It's going, it's going. Any advance on 290? 300. Oh, just in time, yes. <laughs> Double my money. 320. 350. 380. No! <laughs> oh, no! That's amazing. Fair warning, I'm going to sell at 380. That'll do, Perky. 380, I'm so pleased. That is so good. I'm so happy for Thank you. Thank you. Over £200 profit on that. Tim waited until the end to make quite a splash, and he finishes with a new total after auction costs of £599.22p. But Arita pulled out all the stops and romped home to win, with a fine new total after sale room fees of £642.12p. Well done. Well, it's become a common theme for me to say congratulations again for winning another auction. Well, I have to say, though, you have been just behind me the whole entire time. I know. Um, tell me about it. Should we do some well, more shopping? Yes, please. We've only got one more auction to go I to. I know. I can't believe this is coming to We're end. We're going to have to make these shopping days count. <laughs>